three, two, one. Welcome to 96.3 OHM Radio. This is Tales from the Manor presented by Enough Pie, a nonprofit organization in Charleston's Upper Peninsula that uses creativity to connect and empower the community. Tales from the Manor features a conversation with residents of Joseph Floyd Manor with me, Jay Smith, and my co-host, Summer Anderson. Joseph Floyd Manor is a public housing high-rise in Charleston's Upper Peninsula filled with unique and wise elders who have incredible stories to share with the world. We're here to shine a little light on these neighbors and learn a little more about the people that came before us. So thank you for listening. Today I'd like to welcome our special guest, Alicia Pelfrey. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. How are you doing? Fine. That's good. We're so happy to have you. Alicia, thank you for being here. Can you share with us where and when you were born and a little about the place you grew up? I uh, was born here in Charleston, 1960. Mm -hmm. I was raised in the North area. Uh, Matter of fact, the the North Charleston Coliseum took my house. (laughs) That's the area that I actually grew up in. How old were you when that happened? Were you an adult or a child when? The- oh, I had already moved out. You had. So That's right, because it was we we decided we decided before we got on the air that it was about ten eleven years ago that that happened. It was at least yeah twelve maybe. Right. And so, what were um, what was your childhood like in that area? When I was growing up, uh, they were just starting out a lot of things. Like uh, I don't know if you remember or heard of Bonds Wilson High School. It was a high school off of, um, you got West Montague and then you got East Montague. Anyway, Mm -hmm. it was, at the time, Bonds Wilson was an all-black school. Mm -hmm. And they were starting to mix. Mm -hmm. And that's the time when I grew up. And so a special bus would come to, mostly it was all white in the area where I lived. Mm -hmm. And they would get us and take us. They wanted to start putting... You know, integrating. So I was like one of the first ten in Bonds Wilson. Wow, <laughs> this is really interesting. Yeah. What was that like? Scary? Were you scared? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was ninth grade. Okay. When, it, when I started, when it started happening, and right. um, they didn't like you messing it coming in their school. So mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. to say, it was hard. Well, it's interesting because I guess from both sides. Um, I think change is hard and scary. Few people really welcome that usually, and so I think. Whereas by st- on the other end, the right? other high school was North Charleston High. Yes. And it was all white. Right. And then they integrated right. to there. So. But it is interesting to hear the perspective because it works both ways. My mother, <laughs> my mother was a preacher. She was? My mother is a, she's oh. 86 years old. She's still alive. And my mother is a preacher. That's amazing. We know in church. Wow. <laughs> a lot in church. How Has she been preaching your whole life or did she? I, I, can, I can remember. Wow. What denomination? She's something else. Pentecostal holiness. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. Just about anywhere she goes still now, they'll, she plays the guitar and they'll call her up. Bring her guitar, and there she goes. That's amazing. Do you play any instruments as well? Do I? Mm-hmm. I started playing the piano for the church, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I miss it because at the time when I got, uh, have st- I have stenosis, spinal stenosis, and mm-hmm. my leg went out totally. I couldn't even move my toes. So oh, wow. the church at the time did not have a way to do the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Plus, I, the, the leg that I used to play the piano, um, the I could not use. And um, um, so I had to step down for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. But I did play the piano for church and uh, help lead the singing, and mm-hmm. me and my sister. So that's a big part of your life, Definitely. to say the least. It is after I um, got my head 
screwed on, right? Being a um, preacher's daughter. Yep. But I came back. That's the most important thing. It is the very most important right? thing. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Amazing. I dated a preacher's son for a little while, so really? yeah. I'm also a PK, so I, I <laughs> yeah, definitely you know. know. <laughs> I like that little shorthand. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we have to shorten it. It's, it's time That's great. all right. I'm going to be back on the piano. I want to say oh, nice. I have two daughters and a son-in-law mm -hmm. that um, they sing. Boy, do they sing! Amazing. And they're gonna. We're gonna get it together. Oh, that's I'm gonna cool. make them help me sing. <laughs> they don't know it yet. <laughs> no, they will soon. They all know soon enough. <laughs> well, my daughter know. plays the drums. Oh, oh wow! Boy, does she play the drums! Oh, really? And um, well, I'm very proud. When of that them. happens, yes. I want a front row seat to the concert. <laughs> <laughs> what? Tell me about. So you had sisters. Three. Three sisters? sisters and one brother, but okay. I was the oldest girl. Oh wow! So you were had to be responsible a lot, I'm sure. Take care of your younger siblings. Yeah. And are you are you still close with any of your siblings? Oh yeah. Um, the next to the youngest mm -hmm. uh, sister she has she passed away. I'm sorry. Cancer. Mm -hmm. and she was. Um, it's like a miracle. Really? Um, when it comes to playing the piano and singing. Really? She was the radio station KCL. Uh huh. That she was on it constantly, oh, everybody. Really? Yeah. She had made records and she was so good. But she was one beautiful person, oh. I'm telling you. What's her and name? And you would go to a concert to hear her. Right. <laughs> she was good. What's her name? Her name was Kim. Okay. I still have two sisters here mm -hmm. in Charleston. Mm -hmm. One sister now that I I put in for where I live. Mm -hmm. I had I put in because of my disablement. Mm -hmm. I put in for um, housing mm -hmm. um, because of my mother's house was so much stairs. Yummy. So um, I was staying with her though and taking care of her and everything, and then. When I couldn't walk anymore, she ended up, you know, 85 years old mm -hmm. trying to take care of me. And I just, it really upset me. Here she come hobbling all the time with some food. And yeah. I felt so bad. Mm. I really did. But yeah. now my sister is there. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Has she been there for a while now? Um, I've been, uh, this is the second year in, in housing, so... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my mother, she's, oh, you're just going to up and leave me like that, huh? Just like that. Oh. Did she, she understand that you were doing that because you were trying to definitely. take? Definitely. Okay. She just. Giving she's you just some... gotten better in her in her old age. <laughs> Usually she's they. Softened a little, but sounds she, like. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. it's, it's much better that we can talk now and. Mm-hmm. That's why I like to uh, be able to t I tell my grandkids all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, even other kids that are around me, I, I'm like a Magdan, I guess, all my life. Even my kids, I said, what are you doing, bringing home strays? She <laughs> they bring kids. I caught them really? coming in the windows. Oh, my gosh. You name it. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, my I'm gosh. Like, and, uh, but I just really try to stress to them more mm. than anything. Like with my kids, there isn't anything that I haven't been through mm. or know about right. that you cannot tell me. I love that. Don't ever mm -hmm. be scared mm -hmm. to tell me. Mm -hmm. That fear right there, mm -hmm. a, a certain fear to re give you respect for a parent is one thing. Yeah. But then a fear... That makes you to where you can't explain anything that you're feeling mm -hmm. or maybe something that happened to you that you really need to let them know. Yes. Mm -hmm. That That is not a good fear. Mm -hmm. And I keep pouring it all my life. Mm -hmm. I've poured it into my kid's mm -hmm. head, and it has mattered. It's made a difference. It has. Mm -hmm. My girls especially, they, they'll come to me with anything. Right. And I'm so glad we're able to talk to each other, me and my yeah. mom. 
we had that little problem mm -hmm. growing up, and mm -hmm. she just was a saint mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. She was the preacher, and um, yeah. more than the mom uh -huh. to me. And I uh, had a hard time. Yeah, I started uh, going elsewhere to talk to other people, mm -hmm. and it was other people that I shouldn't have been around right. to talk to. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was married at 15. That's young. <laughs> and that was just another yeah. way to, like, run away. To distance yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was just another way to run away and because mm -hmm. I had been running away. And right. Yeah. That, that's all that was. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it lasted for a while, and I had mm -hmm. two beautiful boys. Mm -hmm. um, I have five kids. You do? The baby is 27. Wow. And... Um, my oldest son passed away about four years ago. Oh, he had a massive heart attack. They found out that he had heart disease, didn't oh. know it. Oh my God. And he was a big old boy. He yeah. was about wow. six four, three hundred 350 wow. pounds. And his heart just okay. literally exploded, they said. Wow. He, he didn't feel no pain or anything. He mm. just- um, That's horrible. They said there wasn't anything that could have ever been done anyway with the disease that he had, so. That must have been the worst phone call of your life. My Both of my daughters and a uh, couple other friends, I was staying at my mother's. Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk at the time. I had already mm -hmm. uh, had the stenosis, and I was it was bad. I'm better now. Mm -hmm. I can get around with a walker. At the time, I couldn't even move my toes. Right. Um, they come piling into the room. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, no. you know, all of these people. I um, also have epilepsy. I think that's what they were worried about, mm -hmm. which is another good, another experience to have with your children growing mm -hmm. up. <laughs> yes. I did have a lot of grandma seizures. Yeah. And uh, mm. if I drove, I tried to drive by myself. Mm-hmm. I've had a few seizures driving. Wow. <laughs> um, but Lord must be saving me for something. I was going to yeah. say that you're definitely schooled in being comfortable with a lack of when control. You, when you kind of depend on your kids for some things like I have done, mm -hmm. um, and you come out of a seizure and you got a mouthful of rocks and dirt and mm -hmm. little sticks, and I'm like, What's happening? I mean, your son says, Mom, I didn't have nothing else to put in your mouth. But, and my dirty socks was on the floor. He put his socks in my mouth so I wouldn't bite my tongue. Oh, my god! And I'm like, the kids just had heyday. They were all yeah. laughing and laughing. They were. Because <laughs> here I am kind of dizzy from a from a seizure, seizure. And I'm spitting stuff out everywhere. Oh and gosh. I'm like, and they're laughing. But what a but it turns into good. Yeah, what a beautiful shot of turns into a family. Good. They're crazy. Yeah, I right. love that. Maybe though. I'm well, that's, anyway, that's a good thing. Turns into yeah. good. Oh. Well, for those of you that are just tuning in, I'm Jay Smith and I along with my co host Summer Anderson, we're the host of Tales from the Manor. And we have been talking to Alicia Pelfrey today uh, a little bit about her life and experiences. And we're going to take a quick break here and play a song that she's chosen called Still Holding On by Jason Crabb. So enjoy the music and thanks for listening to OHM Radio, your nonprofit, non commercial radio station. I'm still my soul and the bridges that's behind me Lord I burn them to the ground I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever found And we're back. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to 96.3 Ohm Radio, your nonprofit, non commercial local radio station. We are broadcasting live from Workshop at 1503 King Street inside the Ohm Radio station. My name is Summer Anderson, and I, along with Jay Smith, are the hosts of Tales from the Manor. For those of you just joining us, we have been talking to Leisha Pelfrey and uh, her song, Still Holding On by Jason Crabb. Yeah, it's such a beautiful song. Um, I kind of want to know what it means to you and um, just, you know, how you really feel well, about it. When I reached that point in my life to where I had uh, gotten so far down, I mean, in, in the street, you name it, mm-hmm. drugs, from running away and everything, mm-hmm. I just started uh, trying everything. And uh, I had the two boys at the time. I mm-hmm. still had them. This was after um, I had been married the first time I uh, ended up with a very abusive. That marriage was very abusive, mm-hmm. which was okay for me, I felt like. But then mm-hmm. when it started getting abusive for my babies, mm-hmm. no, no. Yeah. I had no problem leaving. Yeah. But then I... Uh, started following drugs and everything and going down, down, down and dragging them with me everywhere I went. And then one day I just had a little talk, Mm -hmm. like with an attitude. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, you say you can help me. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to go to the church. We're going to see. This is me, and I was actually having this conversation with the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He told me, I I know people say that sometimes God tells them things and mm-hmm. you wonder how would God tell you something, but yeah. he actually let me hear the murmur and I could hear what it was saying. You take one step for me and I'll do the rest. Oh my gosh. The boys had never even been to church. I think they were like four and five at the time. Mm-hmm. I did. It was a Sunday morning. My mom was there right on the front bench, as wow. usual. Mm-hmm. I come through the door, and it went, as soon as I stepped that one step through the door, something just hit me. I was ready to give it all to him. Yeah. I'm so tired of it. Yeah. I don't want none of it mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. You can have it all. Mm-hmm. And I run up there, and I fell down at her knees. Mm-hmm. I must have been down on my knees two or three hours crying and just giving it. You got to give it all to him or it isn't going to do any good. Mm -hmm. Don't keep none of it. Mm -mm. Give it to him. Mm -hmm. If you think you stand in front of the preacher and there's one little touch of anointing you on the head is going to get you to heaven, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. If you ain't ready to give it anything that you feel like in your that isn't right, you know what you feel like is right and wrong. You don't need nobody to tell you. Mm -hmm. You know how you really feel. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to go by no rules. We don't have to go by what this one says and that one says. You got your own mind. Mm -hmm. You know what you feel like is wrong. And you get ready and you give it all to him. Mm -hmm. And that's what that song is. I gave it all to him and I'm still holding on to the best thing I ever had mm-hmm. out of all of the things I ever tried in my life. Yeah. The best thing I mm-hmm. ever had, and he helped me. I had three more kids after that. I raised them all in church. He promised mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. He said, you train them up in the way that they should go, yeah. and I won't leave them. Mm-hmm. And I'm believing that. Mm-hmm. He promised me that, and he keeps his promises, and I know he does, just like with me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that people thought how far I had went that mm-hmm. that I would never be back. Right. right. <laughs> and then I ended up being the piano player yeah. and the song leader yeah. for the church. Yeah. So just from what my experience, there isn't anything anybody could say that would... Um, Say that you can't do it because mm-hmm. you can if you want it. Mm-hmm. You got to want it. That's what it is. And I wanted it. Yeah. I was tired of it. I was tired mm-hmm. of streets. I was tired of 
what's my kids going to eat in the morning? Mm -hmm. That night that I went home, first of all, I had to start deciding I'm going to move. I was staying with someone. Mm -hmm. But you know, one of the best things that I'll never forget was them two little boys. Uh I went in there to talk to them before they went to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I kissed them. And I told them how much I love them. Mm-hmm. And just say little things like your beautiful blue eyes, you just don't know. Mm-hmm. Then boys thought, Mama, are you sick? Oh. Are you, Mama, what's wrong with you? Yeah. They'd never heard it. Wow. I don't, I don't know mm-hmm. how long it had been. And I stayed in there with them a while and talked with them. And they went to sleep so peaceful, so different. Mm-hmm. It was just all different. God, God, it, you want a difference. If you want something to make a difference, if you need a change mm-hmm. for the better, I don't, I can't help what other people, some people seem to want to think about mm-hmm. things, but I know he made my life great mm-hmm. and he's still right there. He's a great friend. He's a good God, and I'm so happy that he reached way down and picked me up and took me back. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. That's a beautiful and very powerful story. Yeah. (laughs) That's amazing. And to watch you light up when you speak about it, I wish everyone could see that. Yeah, definitely. It's it's such a, a great gift to be able to have that connection with him and to know that he's on your side and um, that whatever happens and whatever you go through and whatever life throws at you, twists and turns, that you'll always be able to come out on the on the right side because he got you. He got That's your right. back. And uh, you were saying he's an on-time God. It's a song I used to sing That's, when I was in church. Um, That's right. If was he's an on-time God. Favorites. He may not come when you want him, but he's well, always right on time. My daughter on the drums with yeah. that song. <laughs> <laughs> they had to put my her mom on the plexiglass. drums with that song. <laughs> she was so... we got to get everybody <laughs> together here. Yeah, my mom, auntie, and uncle, mm-hmm. they all play the drums. What are you the proudest of? My kids. They bring you a lot of joy. My 20s, the baby, she has four kids. She oh. does. <laughs> so uh-huh. I, um, I'm so glad that my grands know me mm-hmm. for what I am, mm-hmm. what I do. Right. I try to teach them anything that I missed or wish I had done one way with my kids. Mm-hmm. So I try, I try to, um, mm-hmm. you know, teach them. And I have found out, I don't know, I, I don't know. It's evidently, it was said to do it wrong because when I just sit them down and have a little conversation and talk and explain things, it seems to work so much better than I'm going to get the belt if yeah. you don't stop. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we don't give it children credit. It just works sure. yeah. Yeah. so much better. It does. And they're like mm-hmm. hanging on me, and oh, Nana, we love you. Mm-hmm. You know, we know. Oh. I think they know Nana's not going to get the belt. So. They do, but you know, you're mm-hmm. you're coming from a place of respect, mm-hmm. and they feel that, mm-hmm. so they respect you back. Why can't you just come live with us, Nana? Oh. This is when you hear <laughs> things like that yeah. all the time. Oh. It, yeah, I think we go to the belt because I know the Bible obviously says, "Spare the rod, spoil the child." I but I think that. We don't think that rod could mean something else. It can. And, and I rod don't think can it mean, means a rod. It, yeah, it, it can mean speaking. It That's mean right. Teaching. Teaching, yeah. That's right. So, and, and that is you have to look completely at a good way to cook. Spiritually. Because we don't give children enough credit. They're smart. They yeah, understand. They <laughs> it's it's something, something that I never had. And that's somebody sitting down and talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or being able to go to someone and talk mm-hmm. to them. Right. And if a child is missing that in their life, mm-hmm. and they have a problem, mm-hmm. any problem, mm-hmm. and they don't have someone that they feel like they can go to, yes. mm-hmm. even if it's not a parent. Yeah. 
need right. someone to go to. I definitely think that is a great way, and we should all mm-hmm. consider talking more yeah. to each other, mm-hmm. to our family, to our parents, to our children. Sometimes it's so hard to get a conversation started. Mm-hmm. You just don't know right. what right. to say. And that's why I'm so but, thankful for, for mm-hmm. Tales from the Manor, uh, mm-hmm. just because this is a conversation that we're having, right. and it's about starting a conversation with people that we might not see every day mm-hmm. or we might not know too much about and we just pass and not really think of it so I'm so thankful mm-hmm. for this platform that we get to have a conversation with people like you and that everybody else gets to hear it right. so that they can have a conversation mm-hmm. um, with someone else hopefully yeah. it would yeah. start up a, a conversation a ripple effect yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. it's true I couldn't agree more it's an honor um, before we go, I just want to ask one more question here. Uh, how would you like to be remembered? I want to be remembered special for my kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to be remembered as someone who um, came back. <laughs> I, want, I want to be that. Oh, she was the one that started going back to church and mm-hmm. stayed in church mm-hmm. the rest of her life and used to testify all the time. That mm-hmm. one? Yeah, that one. I would li- I want to be re- remembered for the that for something like that. If someone that um you could go to mm-hmm. when you did need to talk mm-hmm. and um, how that God brought me. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing your powerful story. That will stay with me for the rest of my life. (laughs) Thank you. I hope I didn't talk to you today. You just, it was amazing. So beautiful. You've been listening to Nuff Pies, Tales from the Manor, a conversation with residents of the Joseph Lloyd Manor with me and my co-host, Jay Smith. To learn more about Enough Pie, a nonprofit that uses creativity to connect and empower our community on Charleston's Upper Peninsula, please visit enoughpie.org. To learn more about Ohm Radio, please visit www.ohmradio963.org. Thank you so much for joining us, listeners. Remember to circulate positivity and enjoy life. And remember to keep holding on. See you next time. Thank you. Because you're the best thing I ever found.